At this time, I'd like to call the regular board meeting to order of the Amherst Township Area School District. If we could all rise for a pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible,
time, uh, moving on to consent agenda. Is there a motion? So, no, I'll second that. All right. Okay, by Melissa, second by Jim to adopt the consent agenda. On the consent agenda tonight, there is um, the minute meeting, the meeting minutes, um, co curricular hires. Um, no, there is no co curricular no. hires. That's been uh, scratched until August. Um, a higher recommendation for Samantha Radke. Elementary School Guidance Counselor, a higher recommendation of Laura Duggan, Director of Curriculum and Instruction, higher recommendation for Ashley, oh boy, Arrigan, Speech and Language um, Therapy, she might need to help me. <laughs> <laughs> At least with names anyway. Um, higher recommendation for Elizabeth Ken Canhouse, Second grade teacher at AFP, very recommendation for Kelsey Kojaknik. What? Chinaki. Chinaki. That's for Jeff. We know that. Um, high school guidance counselor. Um, very recommendation for Keita Miles. There, I can get that one. <laughs> First time you teach teacher at AFP. I have a resignation from um, Stacy Endicott, high school guidance. Resignation of Kara Taylor, teacher at AFP. Resignation of Vernon Reinhardt. Resignation of Ashley Maloney, mental health coordinator. Alyssa. Alyssa. I'm sorry, Alyssa. And Laura is in the audience today. It's actually Laura Duggan. Like Duggan. Duggan. Like the show. Oh, sure. That was the show. <laughs> All right. Um, is there discussion? Hearing none, we're going to start this whole. Jim. Yes. Lena. Yes. Kathy. Yes. Melissa. Yes. Jeff. Yes. Joanne. Yes. Ken. Yes. And my boy is yes. The past three two rolls. Um, administrative report. I will be brief, but I would like to talk a little bit at each meeting if that is agreeable. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about what I've been doing with the staff that I've been connecting with. And, uh, Hopefully you guys noticed that I had some hardware in front of me uh, this year, and I want to talk about each of these things. Uh, first of all, I've got a fastener. They used to be brass fasteners, but those, those are too expensive to make and sell now. So it's a little metal fastener, and uh, I've given one of these out to a staff member so far, and I will give these out to people that are good at connecting others and making connections with others. Um, the other thing I have, one of the other things I have is a pulley. And pulleys are designed to make things easier, make work and life easier for people. And I know this is a little bit corny and probably a little unusual for, for some of you, but um, I've given one pulley out to a staff member uh, who's helped another staff member uh, get work done this summer. So I'll be giving pulleys out to people. And then the final thing that I have so far is a wing nut. <laughs> and I have a wing nut because I give a wing nut to uh, members of our administrative team. Uh, I always want and will question and ask our staff to think differently. And I'm going to ask the same of the board as we move into the future. Uh, please ask questions. Uh, leave no stone unturned. Uh, have crazy ideas, because uh, the only way we're going to grow and move forward is if we think a little bit differently. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Finance Committee, Joanne. OK. Finance Committee met at 6.30, and <clears throat> on behalf of the Finance Committee, I move to approve general fund checks number 80862 through 81056, and ACH checks number 900318 through 900358, and 2525 through 2546, totaling $1,613,000. 
$687.17. The activity fund checks number 30750 through 30789 and ACH check number 1129 totaling $34,644.09. One building fund payment of $225,029 and one debt service fund payment of $51.53 for the month of June. Is there a second? Yep. Motion made by Joanne Sick by Jim for our bills, general fund checks number 80862 through 81056 and ACH checks number 900318 through 900358. <coughs> 25 to 20, 2525 to 2546 for a month of June for $1,613,687.17. Activities fund checks number 30750 through 30789 and 1CACH check number 1129 for a month of June for $34,644.09. One building fund payment of $235,029. And one debt service fund payment of fifty one fifty three. Discussion. Hearing none, we'll start this vote with Lena. Yes. Kathy. Yes. Melissa. Yes. Jeff. Yes. Joanne. Yes. Ken. Yes. Jim. Yes. And my word is yes. Passes eight zero. <coughs> Okay, and the next item on the agenda was the revenue limit and equalization fee. Was presented by Ryan. Anything else? No, nope, that's all. Can I just ask a question? Um, with the mill rate, uh, weren't we told the low rate gets from 10, the more Difficult it gets for us. Okay, and now we're in the eights, right? Well, no, it's projected to be in the seven. Seven point eight five. Yeah. Seven point eight five. And okay. and again, that's the the function of the the double negative of the school funding formula. And unfortunately, Adams Friendship is is in that double negative right now. So we are we're we're declining enrollment the school district, so we're receiving less money based on headcount on an annual basis. And as we receive less money for the students we serve, it appears that we have more and more property value behind each of the students that we do serve. <clears throat> so the double negative is we're, we're generating less revenue based on headcount, and our citizens are funding a larger percentage of what it takes to operate the school district on an annual basis. And we're a tertiary aid school district, so we actually give back a little bit of every dollar that we spend because we have so much property value behind each of the students we serve. With this meeting you're attending, does it appear that anything will change? The other thing I wanted to say is, is, is there's going to be a lot of talk in the news over the next month about uh, the governor's budget proposal and where we are with that. And, and I've been asked to speak at a, a panel in La Crosse in, in early August about school finance and what the funding formula means for districts like ours, like Adams Rentia. Um, I, I don't know if there's going to be immediate change, but there are too many school districts like ours across the state uh, to not necessarily be heard over time. Okay. Thank you. With that, we'll go to new business, 4K Renewal Unlimited Agreement. I believe the reason why this is on our agenda is that even though there is, if you read through it, there it says that it um, renews itself if we don't tell them by May 1st, but um, because of a change in um, the superintendent, we wanted to update the contract with the correct people involved. And that's really the only change, is that correct, Ronnie? Right? No. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for a motion to um, approve this contract. I move to approve the contract for renewal unlimited for the 2019-2020 
program agreement. I'll second that. Motion made by Kathy, second by Jim for the uh, 4K Renewal Unlimited Agreement for 2019-2020 <coughs> um, discussion. One of the discussions then would be is next year, unless we want to get out of it by May 1st, it's, you won't see it on the agenda next year. It's just going to roll over. Okay. Go ahead, Jim. I'm going to say I hope that we see it on the agenda next year. Um, I'm going to what I said last year. Um, these are, I mean, we just talked about how our aid is going down. This is money that is not flowing, per se, into the district. We're paying somebody to do a service that potentially that we could provide um, if we design the correct program to do it. Um, we got to look at low-hanging fruit. This is low-hanging fruit, potentially, that we need to look at. One of the issues with 4K funding in the state of Wisconsin is that regardless of the amount of time that you educate students, you can only recoup 67% per child. Uh, so in my previous school district, uh, we felt that the need was great, was so great that we funded full day 4K, uh, four days a week, and uh, took a loss on that decision from a financial perspective, but we believe and over time that it helped make gains in student progress. So something that I'd like to think about as well. Any other comments or discussion? Here we go. We'll start to with Kathy. Yes. Melissa. Yes. Jeff. Yes. Joy. Yes. Ken. Yes. Jim. Yes. Lana. Yes. And my board of judges. That's a big term. High school student handbook. Julie is to go up there to the podium. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Alright, so Nick and I had a chance to meet and go through some changes. We have a change at the administration level of the high school. Uh, so when you look through it, anything highlighted in yellow will be an addition. Anything highlighted in red will be taken out or replaced by something in yellow. Um, and then the thing will change at the end once approved is the table of contents will add uh, things in there and some formatting changes. So as we go down, this uh, section was taken out because of the change in the board policy for the graduation policy. So there is no longer a requirement for seniors. Then um, we're taking the truancy, if you scroll down a little bit, see, there's a grid that we used to have for many years, for the last dozen years or so, that we decided to take out. Um, I just added some bullet points to change. One change we're going to have is an attendance team that meets weekly. Uh, to discuss anybody, any student that is meeting the insurance requirements by law. So, um, and then a plan will be made with that attendance team, <coughs> Mr. Storman, uh, social worker, and Sam Roberts, our school resource officer, meeting with, and I'll attend as, as needed. <coughs> Citation. 
It just means that he's made aware of it. We usually work in conjunction with him to determine the appropriate uh, consequence. Last year, and still the community service component through the school before he got to a community to a, a citation level. So um, we're trying to do things to combat it, but it is a, it is a challenge. And Zach works closely with the Drug Freedom County Group, so um, we're getting some resources there as well. Um, we're just taking on some language here uh, because with our attendance uh, additions of above, a referral is written. That's how we're going to monitor using Review 360. We'll monitor uh, the unexcused absences. So we're trying to separate the behavior from, from attendance. And um, if you have one unexcused absence, you're not going to get a uh, discipline referral. So it, it just delineates what our, what our expectations are. And this is just taking out, it was in there twice, it was a bit redundant. So we're just adding to our cell phone policy below, uh, adding in that they can be used for strictly educational purposes in the classroom with permission of the teacher. Uh, so that's something we, Nick and I also met with the school improvement team to talk about some changes to what they, what they needed from the handbook as well, any changes they saw. So this one, um, Came, came there just giving teachers again permission to say, no, you can't use your cell phone. And students need to know that it's strictly with the permission of the teachers right now. It's, um, it's tough to, to control cell phones in the classroom. So it's just there to support teachers. And then they can all support it on the office end. And this kind of spells out the procedure if uh, you're having issues with teachers having issues. This just spells out um, the consequences of how it's going to be followed if the teacher takes it away or the teacher requests it when the student's going to get it back. Just spell it out for them so they know they, they know what to expect. If they do, they don't want to take it. Schools used to have this years ago when cell phones first came out and then it got taken away because there's some legal issues and it's, well, let's use them as a tool in the classroom. Now we're one to one, so there's no reason for a student to have a cell phone on the classroom. Um, unless, again, there might be a time if there's uh, an interesting project or something that the teacher can come up with, we don't want to say you can't use it, but this is just limiting the, the use of, that's not part of the teacher's classroom or curriculum. Kevin, that statement, teachers may request that a cell phone from a student if cell phone may request? It should, okay. Yep, it should say may request a cell phone from a student. Okay. So they may request that a cell phone be given to them? Yep. Okay. Is there any, knowing my background, yep. I could ask for a cell phone and it may not be given to me, so what happens then? Then they'll call the office. Okay. And it's part of the okay. so That sentence just has to be yeah. Going down is just cleaning up the, the taking backpacks out of clothing appropriate for school, which it was in its own uh, section of the handbook, and then adding in the, the second part, skirts, shorts, and shirts with leggings must be mid-thigh. Mid-thigh is pretty uh, hard to monitor, so we're just saying, putting up with the other bullet, uh, bullet above. Uh, backs, mid dress cleavage, buttocks, long arms, shoulders, and things like that. So just putting up the language there. Backpacks was a rule we put in last year. Uh, we did purchase clear backpacks, and we offered those to students if they need one. The only students that should have a backpack in the building and carry them around are uh, students with a medical assessment. So our diabetic students are allowed to carry a backpack with the things that they do. And just some added PDA, which is always fun to deal with. <laughs> Nick will enjoy that this year. And uh, in school suspension expectations, so we are Alec Room, Alternative Learning and Assessment Center. Uh, this is Kelly Bonnie Kelly is in that room. She's going to be now uh, moving as a paraprofessional into our uh, personalist uh, EBD classroom that uh, was approved a few months ago. So um, we don't have the supervisor for Alec anymore. So we've also, one other thing that's been implemented since Alec was implemented is behavior support and academic support in a specialized classroom. So we're using that for specialized students. If there's a regular ed student that needs a break, um, that's what we're missing right now. But we think we will work with teachers to um, 
help get help from the administration office, but also um, use the office area as a place for the students to close cool down. That's where they can go if the students in there to take a test. They can use the library media center. So it's the plan to replace that. Procedural thing for us, um, we get students parking all over the place for different events. Uh, if they're in a sport and they are open gym, they might come to the back of the building and just park along there. It clogs it up. Or during school days, if they're going on a, uh, a field trip, they might park in other areas because they're the first ones in the building. So it's just saying that when they're parking, when the students parked in the, uh, at school, they should be in the student lot. So. I have a question about the $10 parking permit. Sure. I don't know why we actually charge kids for that parking permit. There's no law enforcement for that. We're not enforcing that. I would rather give them a permit so we know who's parking there just in case something would happen. Or if we're doing a drug dog search, you know, and then you know who that is for. But to charge them ten dollars and really have no enforcement for that, I don't I mean I've heard of kids leave the high school and they just pass their parking permit down to the next kid. So we, we find those um, when we have it, usually through a dog search that's when we're going through with law enforcement. Um, we're hoping that the city with uh, Officer Schley that we'll have more enforcement of the lot than we've had in the past. So we haven't had the support um, from whatever it is we've been trying. Go ahead. I can tell you just, you know, uh, sitting on some of these points, it's 50 bucks a semester. Um, and it is regularly ticketed and patrolled in that, but that money is also segregated as far as just for improvements on the lot itself. And that's what I'm familiar with. Because you can designate those funds so that when we seal code it or whatever, you're building that money up over time. I, which I, I like that idea. I'm just thinking that up until you just said that, we've never had law enforcement support to write a ticket that we asked before when we first started doing it, if I, if I correct you. Yeah. So that's how come. I just can't see making kids pay $10 if we're never going to enforce it, but if that's going to happen, then I believe we'd like to test it this year and see what happens. The only cost to us, unless we did something where we get worth that money, is the cost of the tag itself, which um, when I'm right. in the past, not here, is about a dollar, dollar fifty per tag. So. So again, the, the only thing that would change after this, I'll take out that one wording change. Uh, I'll take that. I think um, the WDKM for the radio climate weather, that's not WDKM. Oh, yeah, that changes. Yeah. Athletic fees, just to go back to that one, because those are just two that um, were added in. Mr. Groshek phone was that they were not included in the past. So dance and soccer. What page was the WDK on? Uh, 18. Yeah. So that will no longer be our 
and this document when we share it on the website is a live document, so um, we can make that change once we have it. That's approved.
Um, I like being aware of the changes, especially as it lines up with our policies, as we change policies and then we see it reflected in the handbook. I don't think this is a waste of my time at all. I think it makes me feel more tied in. We don't have nine schools. We've only seen three. So I'm happy to look this over and especially with different things like the new electronic communication devices with the e-cigarettes, etc. So I just take the opposite view that I'm happy to overlook these um, and have any kind of discussion that comes from that. Instead of going on a tariff board, would it be better if we have a, a, a informational, yeah, informational item instead of board Yep. When that, that, work that way, we're not telling them how to do their job. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So from from now on, that's where I'll put that stuff on there. Okay. Any other discussion? Here we go. We'll start with Melissa. Uh, Jeff. Yes. Gwen. Yes. Ken. Yes. Jim. Yes. Lena. Yes. Kathy. Yes. And my word, especially Gerald. Nothing else on our agenda. No reason to not adjourn. We're adjourned at 7.45. Okay. Again, retreat. Two weeks from tonight, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday